All right, so today is day 14 of this Men in Recovery series for National Recovery Month 2016. And I have the pleasure of having another good friend on, and, and that is uh, Tim Walsh, who I've known for some time, and we've had a wonderful connection, really, that is a powerful connection around spirituality, around uh, kind of a spiritual masculinity, and um, really um, just so pleased that you can be a part of this project. I'm honored to be here, Dan. Thanks for thinking of me and asking me to participate. Yeah. Yeah, it's been great. It's really been great. So, yeah, thank you. So, main question um, with every uh, discussion, what's the greatest gift that recovery has given you to help you be the man you, you always knew you could be? Well, I've had the benefit of listening to some of the other uh, speakers that you've had on and listening to their answers. Um, and it's, it's awesome because every single one I can identify with. But uh, what I've been thinking about the last couple of days since you asked me to do this has been the gift of connection. Mm. And, uh, you know, when I think about my adolescence and you know growing up uh basically growing up addicted you know, 11 years old to 22 was my mm. Mm. Uh, i had all my connections were through my substance use uh it, it was very important to me that my relationships were um, affiliated yeah and um my family connections were non-existent uh i was a very very angry kid you know we know the source of that is trauma um and uh, so for me, the very first time uh, I sought real genuine help, or I really asked genuinely for myself for help at 22 years old, I found myself literally surrounded by a group of people who demonstrated unconditional love in a way I'd never seen before. I never witnessed it in, in such a potent and powerful way. And um, I always joke and say that was it was at that moment I changed my drug of choice, <laughs> mm. you know. And um, you know, my drug of choice before that was more, <laughs> whatever you got. And uh, my drug of choice moving forward at that at that moment was, I want more of this thing that we call recovery. Mm. And uh, you know, and from there I just haven't looked back. Literally, I, it's been you know. I just realized yesterday uh, I'm right smack in the middle of my 25th year of recovery mm. and that's just mind-blowing um and then when i look back over the course of these uh, almost 25 years it's uh it's it's really very moving to me to know that i have um, deep connections with people literally all over the globe and beyond that uh the root of all that connection has been uh, very important is deeper connection with myself and who I really am and who I really want to be, you know, answering that second part of the question. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I had no, I had no concept of what I wanted to be as a man uh, in my active addiction because of just, you know, how young I was. I didn't think I'd make it past 25, but uh, my, my desire to be a father, a husband, a friend, a colleague, uh, a son, a brother, all of those gifts that have come along with, you know, becoming who I am just makes me look forward to more. Right. Mm. And then the connection, the deepest connection, the deepest part of the, you know, the tap root is really my connection to what I call source spirit. God, it's indefinable for me. It always has been. Um, but, uh, you know, you you know me well enough to know that I'm sitting in my church, you know, literally right now. Um, this is my deepest connection, what you see behind me. And uh, the deeper I can go into it, uh, the more connected I wind up coming out of the wilderness, literally feeling uh, more connected to myself, to my community, to my family, to my recovery. So, it's so great to... To see that you chose to 
do this in your church. And I was reflecting on that, you know, those who know, you know, how important the outdoors and nature are to your spiritual walk, to your professional walk. Um, you've done a wonderful job of finding that space where you can really help uh, young men and young women get connected to their source through that process of outdoor exploration. Um, when I think about connection as men, and I've talked about this with a couple of other guests, but I'd be interested in your thoughts. It seems that the challenge and the gift is that as men, we are taught to disconnect in so many ways that to live in connection just feels hard. <laughs> it, just, it just feels hard at times. And I got all these these man rules or whatever you want to call it that kind of just have me disconnect, shut down, don't be vulnerable, you know, don't ask for help. Don't share your real feelings. Take everything personally. <laughs> Always be number one, you know, don't be generous in your, your support in other people's success because that means they're taking from yours, you know, all of that is disconnection. Totally. Absolutely. It's funny, a friend of mine just we got into a text banter uh, recently. You know, it's one of those connections I have where we don't talk all the time, but when we do, we, we just, you know, riff off each other. And um, he spoke to a deeper connection between us that he wasn't, we, neither one of us was aware of that we have this uh, woman in our life who was a dear friend of my mom's who happened to be a huge mentor to him. And we, you know, we grew up very different places. So it was really interesting to see that she had a huge impact in my life up to a point. And right when I actually kind of started using, I don't think there's a correlation there at all, but, um, and then she moved to where this guy lived when he was exploding in his addiction. And now we're both in recovery. This woman's, come back into his life through my connection to her good old Facebook. Right. And, um, and he says in the text, uh, something along the lines of, I, I don't know, there's a term now, I guess, where it was like, no homo, I guess is the term. Right. Mm. You, when you're yeah. about to say something intimate to another man, you mm. preface it with no homo. Mm -hmm. And I immediately texted back, you know, don't ever effing use that terminology with me again. Mm. Like, and that to me is a perfect example of me being fully masculine in, in my, uh, you know, my, my masculine power of not to be intimidating. Right. But that, that just that firm, no, you, you can't do that with me. That is a boundary that I will not allow to cross. And, That's awesome. And by the way, what the heck, what the F are you thinking? Yeah. As you work in this field specifically with young men, you know, and, and what I realize is there's so much stuff that we adopt in our vernacular, um, even within this field that you and I work in, that's completely unacceptable when you step back and realize, wow, I'm, I'm playing into it, you know, and it's just these little things. So I, I really, you know, I love the first time you, I got to see you do the man rules. Um, that was, you know, I, I've told you this, that was like, all right, I love this guy. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to walk with this guy as long as we can go, you know, as far as we can go. Um, they're, they're just such bullshit. Excuse my language. Um, but that's the best term I can come up with. And when you allow yourself to just admit that the freedom that comes along with it, it's just like, it's just like our addiction, right? Our dependence upon chemicals to adjust our mind and our mood when we depend on these false realities, uh, we're always discontented and always disconnected from ourselves and from any, any source of joy. So if we just pause and allow ourselves to admit, no, this is not true. This is not a truth. This is not, um, this does not fit me and speak our truth to it. The immediate connection I have with men opening that doorway of intimacy. Uh, it just, uh, it's, it's almost like an explosion. Of 
every time. I've never been disappointed by it. And even the times where I've had, you know, guys who are really, really wounded, unable to necessarily receive my offering of connection. Um, there, there's still just something in them. You can just, you know, that they're, they're that you're, you've hit a nerve, mm. but it's not reflective of me. You know, it's like, no, nope, this is who I am. This is what I know works for me and for most men that I've had the pleasure of working with and, and just getting sober with. Uh, but there is deep joy and deep freedom in this, in this truth and this connection of we are men, we are strong, we are vulnerable, uh, and, and we are whole, mm. you know, um, and we don't have to play these silly games anymore. Just- and that's one that's such a wonderful example, right? Because we have these young men today who are really confused mm. and I don't think they know how confused they are because they've got all these mixed messages about being a man and they're still protecting themselves. That response that you had is such a gift to that man, if whether he gets it or not. Right. But then there's also that whole, there's that whole space of like, that's the disconnection, but it's the disconnection that comes out of our authenticity. Right. I mean, like, part of this path can be a lonely path because we won't accept unacceptable behavior. We won't perpetuate that, that homophobic or that sexist talk that unfortunately is a part of so many men's protection. So, you know, we look at it with compassion, but you know, I love how you you were able to be firm. And, and, And it really is that thing of like, that was the disconnection in many ways right and you your response was really just saying i want to connect with you but i will not connect with you in that context not in that space and you know i found i found that to be challenging um in the sense that i know i'm setting myself up for potential disconnection but the key is that it's not disconnection from myself or from the source. And that's where I think we really get to make the ultimate decision is that if I'm going to walk this path of an authentic or a conscious masculinity, I have to understand that it's, it's my higher power. It's the source and myself that really become the ultimate um, connection. What do you think about that? Absolutely. And I always say to people that the, the uh, you know, you know, I've worked in the, in the world, of, you know, um, yoga a little bit. I'm not a yoga teacher, but I work with a lot of those folks and um, overwhelmingly female, right, uh, community. And uh, some of the running jokes about how do you get people involved? How do you get guys to go to yoga? Just again, just unacceptable. You know, the way it's, it's try to be, people try to pitch it. Um, what I, what I find source for me, and this is why I don't, I use the term God. Again, it's all about the context of the conversation. Um, The only definition that I can rest on is that it's truly neutral. It's a truly neutral power. It's a true yin and yang. It's the true male, female. It's it's the complete union of all these energies together, outwardly expressing themselves through creation. Uh, And the creativity within me, therefore, is a neutral creativity. So the more I can swing, you know, one direction or the other is all dependent upon how centered I am to start. Mm. And that deep connect. And again, this is why this is my church back here. Right. Um, I love pointing out the landscape and saying, what do you see as a masculine or feminine? And most people see femininity, right? We associate the earth as the earth mother. And then I say, all right, but what about all these straight lines and the trees that are standing erect? (laughs) right no you know and and again it's like just just really getting everyone to share in in a context of um it's union Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. father sky mother earth um you know the 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 marriage of of the the earth and the sun is what gives birth to all life on earth so I, i i just love that there are so many examples around us in nature for 
perfect union. Um, and we've tricked ourselves into believing we are apart from nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's some theories out there that maybe we are, yeah, you know, some kind of alien species. Um, which, <laughs> probably makes most sense to how self-destructive we are and how destructive of our home we are. Mm. However, uh, I've I've seen the flip side. I've seen people, uh, you know, truly ascended masters, who know that you know we are of nature, and I've witnessed and had the, the pleasure of sitting in circle with them, um, male and female. That uh, if we can honor, truly honor this divine neutrality and union within us and come from that place we, we can certainly navigate any relationship mm. um, so and then it, what does this all have to do with men in recovery i really believe you know my, you know me my mantra is get outside hug, hug a freaking tree <laughs> I, you know my my lifestyle up till 22 years old you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, a minimum of a boot or a fifth yeah so now today hug a tree yeah right? allow allow that softness in you to rub up around that firmness you know that tree and then take it further and i guarantee it if you spend time out there you're going to come back stronger in your recovery you come back stronger in your connection um, but again putting this together dan this commitment um you know, that was the other word i thought of is you know, the gift of commitment um, i appreciate guys like you being that huge power of example and uh, for everybody in recovery this month we're in recovery. Uh, please let's celebrate this out loud um, we've got a lot of work to do mm. wow honored to be a part of this Dan. thank you so much for being a part of it um you know i love that idea of that integrated masculinity um and i mean what you said was so eloquent so i'm not even gonna not even gonna um i'll just let it be right um so i i do ask my um guests to have the last word on this uh, conversation i, I want to truly thank you for the example you've been to me about uh, what it means to walk a spiritual path with um, not only authenticity but courage um, to to be a voice <laughs> a voice in the wilderness <laughs> um, uh, and uh, you know I, I love i love the relationships that connection where there's the mutuality it's not what can I take, and it's not just what can I give. It's it's how do we grow in connection, and so I I feel that with you. So you, you know, and it's connection and disconnection and reconnection, and we do it all over again, right? So as I say, take us home. All right. Well, um, again, thank you. Um, deeply honored to be connected to you, Dan. And, and it's very meaningful way uh, my friend my brother uh, and you know I it, it's truly this simple if you get out be of nature and allow the connection to unfold I guarantee it will I guarantee there is no question uh, the more uncomfortable you are the more discomfort you experience in the wilderness and by the way the wilderness could be your backyard mm -hmm. it could be the park across the street in the middle of the city uh, but the more you get in the greenery the more you get in uh, away from the human bustle and hustle and the more uncomfortable you are the more you need that medicine mm -hmm. right the more that's a great sign of how disconnected you might truly be Mm. Um, but again, one thing I have to say uh, is be safe. <laughs> mm. uh, nature is neutral. <laughs> Therefore, uh, it will kick your ass. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not being responsible. Mm. So, uh, you know, very similar to what happened to us in our relationship to substances, right? Oh, and that last thing, um, if you're struggling with your relationship with substances or addictive behavior, you're in wrong relationship. That's mm -hmm. all. 
okay? And wrong, not in the, the good, bad, you're bad. Not shame, wrong. But just there is an adjustment in your relationship that needs to be made with that substance. And uh, I'm not a quitter. I, never, I didn't quit drugs and alcohol, right? I just came into right relationship with them. Mm, wow. Because of that right relationship, I've not struggled in my recovery. That's the gift. I, I believe the steps, 12-step program, that's what that second step's about. Restoring to sanity is that right relationship that we're seeking. So, um, again, I, I wish everyone great joy on their journey. And Dan, thank you again. Absolutely. Happy Recovery Month. Happy Recovery Month. All right. All right.